ladies and gentlemen, happy Thanksgiving 2011. And I promised you a special treat on Thanksgiving Day. And when I put my pyramid bandana on, it came to me as if it was magic this morning. I have found the cube of Saturn on the reverse of the $1 bill. Not only have I found the cube of Saturn, but I have found the phobe ring, and you can Google that or look in the link in my description box, the phobe ring that sets at 27 degrees to the rest of the rings of Saturn itself. And I have it on my screen laid out with a protractor marked with red and black tape for you to see that in fact the phobe ring that I have is an exact not close to, not almost, but an exact 27 degrees to the plane of this subject matter that I have behind me on my screen, which is also part of a creature that looks like it is formed from, a long, from the two forks beards that come down from the Egyptian faces on the reverse of the one dollar bill that we'll get to in a moment but for now I'm going to show you the phobe ring that's F-O-E-B-E -E ring R-I-N-G you can google that and it will show you exactly what I'm talking about I can't put it up on the screen for purposes because I monetized this video and there are certain restrictions about putting certain things up however let us zoom in on the reverse of the one dollar bill in the methodology in which I fold it and of course you know who I am I'm the fellow that wrote the book Angels on the Ark by Michael Fazio you thought I was gonna forget and this is the this is the phobe ring that appears around Saturn this this is let us say that this is Saturn okay let us just say that in the center of my marker here is Saturn then let us say that this is the cube that represents Saturn and it is a perfect cube this is a perfect cube one side well let us not prove it to you that it's a perfect cube simply by getting my square and this is the square that proves it is a perfect cube if you'll notice it is a perfect cube. So, that being said, the central portion that I just pointed out would be the, the Saturn itself within the central portion of the cube. Now, I've given you a moment to look at that, but, but that's enough time at this point. And what I have now is we're going to go to the points on either end of the Saturn-like rings, one point there, one point here, one point over here. These are the ends of the rings, and I call them the phobic rings because, ladies and gentlemen, what you see on your screen before you is what is known as a protractor. And the angle of inclination for this protractor that you see on your screen is exactly zero degrees here, and 27 degrees here. Now you can see that if, if it zooms in enough, and I believe it does, and what you see there is 27 degrees. So when I move the point, when I move this point, which is the edge of the phobic ring, to the, to the dot in the middle of the protractor, to the dot in the middle of the protractor, which represents the zero, by this red arrow. When I move the point of the phobe ring to the, to, the, to the arrow, it will turn into what you see on your screen as a perfect lining up right there. And to prove that it lines up perfectly, we're going to just put my six inch scale across the bottom from point to point, and you can see that I, I left a little bit of a space, but you can see that from point to point, from point to point, from point to point, you can see that this is in fact zeroed out on the arrow. Now moving past that, now that we have that established, the 27 degree mark on the protractor, which is here, 
where the wooden ruler is, the 27 degree and the zero degree, this is precisely 27 degrees. And why do I harp on that 20 degree aspect? Well, beyond the main rings, beyond the main rings of Saturn, and I'm going to bring this into the screen, it was just something I copied out of the encyclopedia, beyond the main ring is the Phob ring, which is tilted at a 27 degrees to the other rings, and like Phob, orbits in retrograde fashion. Now, I don't know what the rest of that means is because, ladies and gentlemen, you know and I know that I'm not so smart. But I try harder. Therefore, you can't really, you know, you got to give me that extra, that extra little, whatever that extra little thing is. Depends on who you are, you know. But, uh, so let us go back to the, to the four brings of Saturn and let us slide it back so that you can see it once again. Uh, it, once, it, uh, once it changes size, it's hard to get it back. Uh, we won't even bother with that now. Here, this is, this is it. Bringing it back in. And that's the 27 degree mark. That is the 27 degree mark right there on the protractor as I explained to you. And now I'm going to show you what the rest of the bill is. And we're going to take that and we're going to reduce it in size one level. That Now it becomes the bottom, the bottom of the totem pole with the cube, with the cube around the Saturn-like figure. One corner, two corners, three corners, four corners. It became the cube. Now that you've seen that, we're going to back this off just slightly, and now we're going to reduce this in size, and I'm going to show you, this is the bottom of the totem pole of what appears to be the totem pole at the, at the uh, Bohemian Society. Now the rest of this, we went over yesterday, however, this is the central body of the owl. Let us just say that that is the central body of the owl and that it sets upon the top of the cube of Saturn and then right where the bottom pointer is or right dead center between the pointer I'm going to zoom that in and I want you to look at the owl's eyes. Notice that the eyes of the owl one eye, two eyes, or two eyes Notice that those eyes are in fact perfect circles with an X or a diamond actually inside the eyes. Now they exist because in my book, now you know that I'm going to plug it again if I said in my book, that's the key. In my book, Angels on the Ark by Michael Fazio, a revolutionary new book by the way, and it looks like there might be a five part miniseries coming up. A documentary actually but moving past that in my book I denote the owl's eyes are the key to finding King Solomon's temple on the reverse of the one dollar bill which if you'd like to see you'll have to purchase the book itself however notice the owl's eyes and then notice above those two circles are two more hooked like eyes that appear to be almost well th they appear to be a lot of things but that these eyes create the eyes of the owl or the face of the owl and these eyes above this create a larger entity almost looking at you with a snout that comes down on a 45 degree angle. And rest assured ladies and gentlemen, I've given this a lot of thought. Now I'm going to remove the protractor but first at the top of the tape is the second eye. If you'll notice is the second eye right above this tape right here. This would be one eye and this would be another eye. Now I'm going to remove the protractor itself and then I'm going to back it off slightly and then we're going to look at this as a whole when I when I center this back on the screen. I'm going to show you that what happens here is these two these two could be eyes and the whole face this being the mouth this could be one one mouth 
this could be the eye and the eye of that particular face. It could be because it is, ladies and gentlemen. When I say it could be twice, it means that's what it is. It could be, it could be, that's what it is. It's another face and it's utilizing the eyes here and here and then the snout becomes what is known as the owl's body. Almost as if something had an elongated face, almost as if something had an elongated face and the eyes were above it and those what, the, what is called the forks beards are the, are the cheeks of the face itself. And at this point, ladies and gentlemen, we're running close to being out of time. We have about another 20 seconds. However, if you take this whole picture into account, there are at least, there are at least 10 other faces that you can definitely make out. And at this point, ladies and gentlemen, have a nice Thanksgiving. Thank you for watching my crazy videos, and God day to you all.